Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and in this video we're going to talk about transparency and anonymity, but let me get a couple of other things out of the way first. This is one that was going around on Twitter again, yeah? They're coming up with Kofefe again. It was trending, and the reason is because they're trying to make it look like Trump is an idiot. Well, we all know that Kofefe did actually mean something. They're trying to make it out to be just a mistweet that he typoed. And it's like, no, he didn't, folks. And if you don't believe me, I have two videos that I did that talk about Kofefe and what the real meaning of it is, because it means I will stand up, okay, in Arabic. And to the point where if you read any of the documents that the Google whistleblower put out, they actually went through and they targeted that. They realized what it meant. And so they changed their translation site and they just made it disappear out of that translation database. Yep, that's what they did because they didn't want anybody to know that that's what it meant. So now if you try to Google that in Google Translate, you're going to find out it doesn't mean anything. It'll just translate it Kofefe. That's all it does. So there's nothing but it was there. It used to be there. It's not now. And again, the whistleblower's material proves that. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you about that because, yeah, they are all just trying to make Trump look like an idiot. They don't believe that his tweets sometimes have more meaning to them than they think. And when there's typos, usually there's something he's trying to convey with that. Like, remember the time that he did the uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and he put Wendy Wasserman Schultz? Yep. That's so he could get Wendy trending. Yep. Remember Barack Obama and Wendy, his little pet name for his little girl? Um, so anyway, this was another article I saw on Twitter, and I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's very telling of the time we're in. Secret Service says President Trump and Donald Trump Jr., number one and number two with the highest death threats. It's really sad. And by the way, Don Jr. has a book out. It's coming out, oh, I think, Tuesday. Yeah. So probably when you see this video, that's the day it's coming out. And it's called Triggered, How the Left Thrives on Hate and Wants to Silence Us. And, you know, it just really is a matter of anyone who supports my father is a target. And we know that because I've done videos on that document from Media Matters, and that's exactly what they say, that they're going to try to take down anyone who supports him in any way. That's what they're doing. And look at all the people he lists here, you know. Rand Paul got hurt, seriously, if you didn't know about that. He had some broken ribs and stuff, and he had some real health issues because he was attacked. And Paul's aide, Sergio Gore, Louisiana Representative Steve Scalise and others injured in the June 2017 baseball field shooting assault. Girlfriend Kimberly Guilfoyle, brother Eric Trump and sister Ivanka Trump, former Homeland Security Secretary Christian Nielsen, former spokeswoman Sarah Saunders, top policy aide Stephen Miller, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and Vice President Mike Pence. Now, I could also name Bob Goodlatte on that list because I believe when he was the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, he had a home invasion, I believe. I mean, they didn't hurt him personally, but there was some issue there that they had to look into. So there have been several, and it really is very serious. And here it's very interesting. He said that the president last week said he would have thrown out the first pitch during one of the World Series games, which normally presidents do. But they've got to dress me up in a lot of heavy armor. I look too heavy. <laughs> so, yeah, the body armor has to be on there. And a lot of times when you see him, I think he's wearing body armor most of the time when he's in public. So, you know, it's kind of sad that that's where we're at, but it is. So continue to pray for his protection because I do worry about him. But I thought this was really nice. This was something that he put as an end note in his book, uh, Don Jr., to my siblings, Eric, Ivanka, Tiffany, and Barron, only you can understand the craziness we have experienced in the last three years. We learned who our true friends are, and we learned the viciousness of fake news. Nothing could have prepared us for the lies. We are Trumps. We don't play the victim card, and we will succeed here as well. We are in this together. 
I thought that was really nice. Now, interestingly enough, this book is being published by Ashet Book Group. Now, you'll have to pardon me. It may be pronounced Hatchet in the United States. I don't know. But it's a French company and it's pronounced Ashet over there. So, yeah, that's really what it is. And it's one of the main book publishers in the United States. I think there's six of them, maybe only four now. I don't remember right off. But anyway, they pretty much control everything that's out there that's published traditionally, which is why I'm not publishing traditionally. So anyway, they're the ones that published it. Now, this is interesting because I also saw this. It came out on the 22nd, but I just saw it today. If you remember, there was a New York Times op-ed that was by this anonymous official, and it was, you know, saying Trump is destroying the world, basically, <laughs> and you need to know this. I'm a senior official. I have an inside track, and it, it was just a really nasty op-ed, and it was anonymous. That was the thing. Of course, that's how they're playing it. The deep state does things anonymously. Have you noticed? Yeah. Well, anyway, this book ironically, is going to be put out by Ashet. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be put out by the same people. So I thought it was really weird. And the name of it is A Warning. That's the name of this book that's coming out. And it's sure to spark yet another political firestorm in the nation as the initial op-ed prompted intense media coverage and vehement denunciations from the White House because it was a bunch of hooey. Anybody who read it said it was a bunch of hooey. So I wanted to point that out to you that this is the book and it doesn't say it here that that's who's publishing it, but it does here because this one came out just today, just a little bit ago, in fact, and it's the Justice Department demands information on anonymous author of A Warning. You see, there's this pesky little thing that people who are senior officials in the White House have to sign. It's called a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Yeah. And so this person, if they are a senior official, had to have signed that. And when you sign something like that, you're not allowed to publish a book about what you're doing in your position without it being reviewed, you know, for national security issues. So you can't do that. And so there is a little battle going on right now. The Justice Department on Monday demanded information on the anonymous senior Trump administration staffer behind the infamous 2018 resistance New York Times op-ed ahead of the mysterious author's upcoming anti-Trump book. Fox News confirmed that the Justice Department officials asked for details on the anonymous author in a letter to the publisher on Monday, which also indicated that the secretive author could be subject to non-disclosure agreements. And I tried looking for that letter. I couldn't find it. Sorry. If the author is, in fact, a current or former senior official in the Trump administration, publication of the book may violate that official's legal obligations under one or more non-disclosure agreements, including non-disclosure agreements that are routinely required with respect to information obtained in the course of one's official responsibilities or as a condition for access to classified information. Such agreements typically require that any written work potentially containing protected information be submitted for pre-publication review. Courts have approved the imposition of a constructive trust to collect the proceeds of the breach generated by an unapproved publication. So, yeah, look at the publisher. There it is. Ashet Book Group. Uh -huh. So just kind of funny. Ashet's in it for the money, of course, and that's all they've ever been in. That's the name of the game in publishing. You got to try to make money, which is why independent publishing is booming because people are tired of playing that game and the fat cats get all the money and the authors get virtually nothing. So anyway, um, that's just what's happening out there. I wanted to inform you of that because this whole anonymous thing, this is how the deep state works. Now, I also want to remind you, as I was looking through things, I found this, and I thought it was good to remind you, is that there also was a similar case against Edward Snowden because of publishing this book. And it was in violation of the CIA and NSA non-disclosure agreements. This is on the justice.gov website. So I'll leave the links to these down below if you want to read them. But this whole thing, see, this one, at least you know who it was. 
Whereas with this anonymous stuff, this is really getting serious. You have an anonymous whistleblower. You have anonymous person writing this book. Everybody's anonymous. Have you noticed that when it comes to the deep state? But what happens with Trump? Trump puts everything out there. That's why they were so shocked that he actually put the transcript out there. And by the way, if you watch the Trump rally tonight, I'm recording this Monday night. <laughs> Did you notice all the read the transcript t-shirts behind him? That was wonderful. That was really great. Great move. But anyway, when we're talking about this whole thing of anonymity versus transparency, there's a reason these people are anonymous. And there's a reason why they are all seeming to come out against Trump. Because, and this was something that I heard on Rush Limbaugh today, I only caught part of his, and I actually caught this part. This is a transcript from his website. And he was talking about Yovanovitch, which now the transcript of her testimony is supposedly out. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. And he said, I cannot emphasize for you enough, folks. And he had a big sigh there. These people in this particular segment were talking about a subset of the deep state, a subset of the administrative state. This subset contains what we would call the foreign policy establishment. It contains elements of the State Department, obviously, but people from the National Security Council with whom the president meets with the intelligence community. Well, it actually has to do with a lot of the people. He goes on to explain here. Let me read it. Maybe throw some four stars in there. Retired four stars are active. These people are lifelong swamp dwellers. They look at themselves as the permanent government. Even a president is a transient. He's going to serve one or two terms. He's going to come and go. In these people's minds, do not doubt me, which is what Rush always says, they run it. They run foreign policy. They run, they set the foreign policy of the country. They are the diplomatic core. They are the ones who talk to other nations' representatives. You throw Trump in the mix, he thinks he sets foreign policy, and he does. The president does. These people don't. But the way things have evolved over decades, I think the real beginning of this, and it may even predate this, is post-World War II for certain. It may predate it, but this is a group of people who view themselves as permanent. I mean, they don't serve for life, but their positions. They do serve longer than presidents. They are, in many cases, career. Remember, we've talked about this before, career politicians. When they say that, start thinking, hmm, deep state, <laughs> because quite often that is what they're talking about when they say career politicians. So they are immune to presidential appointment. And that is huge. This is where the SES comes in, folks. Yes, it does exist. But I want to caution you, not everyone who is SES is deep state. Now, the majority are. I'm not going to argue with you on that. But not everybody, just because Horowitz is SES does not mean that he is deep state. Okay. So people like that, and I'm not sure he's technically considered SES. I, I don't know on that, but just because they are does not mean that they're actually working for the deep state, but there are a bunch of people in our government right now who believe that they are the permanent fixtures and that they're the ones that stay there. Presidents come and go, but they're always there. So they believe they're the ones really running the country. And that's their right. And this is why they're so upset at Trump and they're willing to turn on him for any reason, because they are ticked off that he has the audacity to think that he sets policy and that he actually runs the country. Yeah, that really is it. And of course, that's why they all want to remain anonymous because they're all working as kind of a collective. So they're all part of this group. They will cover for each other. And so you're going to have a hard time figuring out who they are. But, you know, in the case of the whistleblower, we found that out pretty fast. But have you noticed that the mainstream media doesn't want to say the guy's name? And they figure if they don't say the guy's name, then it's not real. And the name's really not out there because it's only those alternative people who have put the name out there and nobody believes them. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's why they have this anonymity and they want to maintain that 
because they believe they're speaking for a great big bunch of career politicians, of people who have been put into these jobs and who are going to be there even when the president leaves and another president comes in, they believe that they have the right to make the decisions in the country and that anything they decide is more authoritative than the president, which obviously is against our Constitution. But they don't seem to care about that. This is how it's been for years and years. And like Rush said, he thought it went back to post-World War II. I'm sure it goes back that far. It may even go back further than that. So, you know, it's been around for a very long time. It's very deeply entrenched in our government, this way of thinking. So this is where the anonymity comes in. Well, we know that the whistleblower is still, his identity is still being protected, even though we all know who it is. But you look at this and now Adam Schiff supposedly made a big movement towards transparency. And he releases the testimony of Yovanovitch and McKinley as part of a new public phase of impeachment inquiry. Okay, down here is the link. Let's see if we can find it again here. It's here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Look at what he does here. The testimony of former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Masha Yovanovitch, from October 11, 2019, can be found here. Key excerpts from Yovanovitch's testimony can be found here. Okay, what happens when you click on this? Ah, oh, it did not work before. They fixed it. Oh, I got to tell you, when they first put this out, <laughs> yeah, it's been fixed now. But when it first went out, when you clicked on this, this is what you got right here. Yeah, because the link wasn't valid. So, but now it actually does work. And the only link you could get to then was the key excerpts. Well, I think what they're doing here is they're hoping the American people are stupid. Because they think that if they put out just, you know, a shortened version, that's what people will read. Well, you know that if it's key excerpts and Adam Schiff got a chance to pick them, yeah, you know what they're going to be saying. And the same thing happened here with McKinley's. Actually, the McKinley, I believe, came up. Yeah, that one came up. I didn't have pro Oh, no, that one doesn't come up now. Oh, goody. Well, I don't know why. But this one came up before and that one didn't. And then now this one comes up and that one didn't. So I don't know. They can't get their act together. But anyway, so that's the situation you have. And I even looked for it. I did a search on this and I still couldn't find it. But okay, now I've got this one. It's going to take a while for it to come up. I have such a slow connection. <laughs> so that's what I get for living in the boondocks. But anyway, so... I just wanted to point that out to you. I really do think the reason they put it out like this is because it's a deceptive tactic. They believe that people will read this one, which is hand-picked items that are going to make Trump look the worst they can instead of actually reading the full thing. So obviously, I haven't had a chance to read the full thing. There's also an update on Flynn and I have that document that I'm going to read tomorrow and I'll try to get that up for Wednesday's video. So I don't know, it's still loading. I told you I live in the sticks. And the last thing I wanted to share with you on this one is, you know, remember we were talking about Bumate. Well, he was one of them that's up for a nomination for the Ninth Circuit Court. And Diane Feinstein was upset because they were ignoring the blue slips on this guy. In other words, Diane didn't like him and neither did Kamala. And so those two were ticked off because the Republicans weren't listening to them <laughs> when they said, we don't want this guy because he's too conservative. And he's actually, he's gay, which is bad for them to have a gay conservative. <laughs> so it should be an interesting thing. But she has this whole diatribe. If you want to read about it, it's like, who you should have listened to us. He has a troubling prosecutorial record. He doesn't know anything. He's not qualified. And we've engaged the White House, negotiated in good faith. I have a hard time believing that. 
and identified qualified consensus Ninth Circuit nominees we could have supported. Yeah, they're all going to be Democrats. Come on, folks. Do we believe that? Not for a minute. So, notwithstanding those efforts, the White House has chosen to rush through an unfit nominee who lacks the judgment qualifications and local respect that should be required of any nominee. So, they just wanted to voice their opinion on this. Not that it's going to make any difference because the Republicans are going to vote him through anyway. And that will be yet one more conservative on the Ninth Circuit Court. Oh, I bet the Democrats hate that. I have one last question for you. I want you to think about this and to bring this up to a lot of people because President Trump kind of touched on it tonight. He was talking about how here's Nancy Pelosi so focused on all this impeachment garbage and her constituents are living in filth. I mean, there's needles, there's excrement, there's everything, trash, rats, everything. And what is she doing to help them out? Nothing. Now, if I were one of her constituents, I'd be really ticked off at her right now. And I'm not sure why the people that live there don't go, hey, what's the deal? Why aren't you doing something to help us? But she's not. And neither is Kamala, you know, and here their state, the state they represent, is burning like crazy. And where are they? Not back in California. And what's going on? You've got Diane Feinstein. You've got Nancy Pelosi. You've got Kamala Harris. These people represent their state, or at least with Nancy Pelosi, part of her state. Don't you think they should be at home dealing with all these wildfires and all the things that are happening there in their own state to try to make life better for their own constituents? Yeah, it really shows you where their priorities are. I don't think they care one iota for the people they're supposed to be representing. I think all they care about is their own wealth, their own power, and that's it. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. Bye.